Hello, it's Don Michelle from Boho Tarot and welcome to another tarot journal with me. Today we're going to be putting in my reading with the Spacious Tarot. This is just a basic three card reading that I did to start my week. But this time I'm going to actually use some book pages to provide the base for my, um, for my journal or for my spread. So one of the great things about using a system like a disc bound or a three ring binder or a system that you can move the pages around is that it gives you the flexibility to be able to add your own pages. So this is the page we're gonna be using for the Spacious Tarot today. I've already cut it down to size and punched it with my disc bound punch just so we can speed up the process a little bit. Now this is also possible to do if you have a bound journal too, because you can just cut the um, book page down to size and paste it over the top of your normal journal page. So to start with, um, what I do is I tend to collect books like this. And this one is a collection of poetry. Um, sometimes they are art books. I also have, for example, um, this one um, from Katie Daisy that I have going to use in a similar fashion. Um, these are just like, they just are full of gorgeous illustrations and wonderful um, sayings and they make excellent pages in your own personal journals. You can see this one is still put together. But basically what I do is I deconstruct the book and then I use the pages in other various projects, um, junk journals, my own tarot journals, um, sometimes in just various art projects. So what I do is I basically take all the pages out of the book. Now with this particular one, it was stitched bound, so I was able to just basically cut all the stitches and then pull the um, pages out. So you can see here that um, some of these are still in their signatures. In fact, most of them are. And then I have some of these single pages that um, usually it's where the glue is bound around each of the signatures. So these make excellent journaling pages. Um, this one in particular has a lot of um, space around them on most of the pages so you can retain a lot of the original artwork and the original poetry um, as, as it works for your spread. So that's what we are going to do today. So this is the book page that I'm going to be using and I've cut my um, three card reading out. I just did a basic three card reading for the start of my week. And for this particular um, page, I like various pieces and parts of this little poetry here. And so what I'm gonna do is actually build that into my, um, into my reading or into my reflections. So let me just show you here a couple of the ones that I've done so far. So here's one that I did um, earlier in the month. And this of course is the book page. It had the rainbow and it said, you are free to lay down, to lay your burdens down. And there was more to this. But for this particular portion really kind of spoke to me in terms of my reading. So I kept that. I used my um, printout to cover up the rest of the saying. I added the little mushroom and, of course, just some little decorative touches. Um, that's one of the ways that I incorporate the text that's on the page into my layout. Um, sometimes the uh, text doesn't really resonate with the reading. So in this case, I put my reading here and then I covered up most of the text and I just left a little portion that really did speak to me, which was tomorrow with hope for today. And that really worked um, for me in terms of my reading. So I kept that and I let that provide, um, provide kind of another layer to my reading, if you will, or in the journal. Um, and then if you look on the back, I've left the back the way it is because I liked that page and the sentiments on it and I just left it the way that it that it is and that works just as well too. Um, here again is another one where I have um, had the left the page there and I've done my reading on the back. And so there's lots of different ways that you can incorporate book pages in this way. So what we're gonna to do today is incorporate this um, little message here into the reading. And I'm gonna use the front and the back, and I'm gonna use the back primarily for my reflections, but I do like that it says, for the mind, what you think. Um, I thought that was a really interesting, uh, interesting sentiment as well, so I will probably work that in. But basically what I'm gonna do here is just kind of read through this and see what pieces or parts of it resonate with me. So I feel like this, 
first part. So my draw was the Hanged One, the Two of Pentacles, and the Ace of Wands, which was a really, um, really active, really interesting um, reading. And I like that there's all this kind of, I know these are supposed to be mountains and stars, but it's kind of movement to me. It looks like the page is kind of flowing back and forth, which for me really works with the perspective, the Two of Pentacles vibe. And then we have sort of that Ace of Wand vibe going on here with the sort of star speckle kind of explosion kind of mimics the same in the ace of wands here so i'm going to keep this first little little section here um with light silhouetting my shoulders i will push into the dark night no longer bound by shadows that trailed so long behind me i thought that was really fitting for this particular reading so what i'm going to do is let my reading probably sit right there and sit below that now i do like the um you know, the flow of the colors, so I don't want to cover too much of that up. I could also move this down here to keep more of that, um, more of that reading and do something up here to collage over the top of that. So I'm just going to pull in probably because this already has a lot of color on it. I don't want to, um, I don't want to cover up too much of it. Um, so I think, I don't mind this this last phrase either. It says, for I've known darkness and I'm learning to be less afraid of it. Um, I think that's, you know, not actually a bad sentiment. So what I think I'm gonna do is use some of this to um, cover up the pieces that I don't want basically. So and this is a really quick and easy way that almost mimics that right there um, to, I kind of like, sorry, I, as, I'm, as I'm working here, I'm kind of getting ideas popping into my head. I kind of like the tell my story. So I'm thinking that if I do something like that, I can use this paper to cover up the portions I don't want, put my reading there. And again, because I'm making use of the book page, I'm not gonna do a ton to this page. Um, I just wanna kind of get some of this extra out of the way first. Um, I just wanna get the, the basis of it that I want, right? And I wanna cover up those pieces that I don't want. So I am, um, almost out of Fabri-Tac and I don't have any more <laughs> and that's a really big bummer the, these days. I have been also using my stick glue but it does not work with heavy cardstock. It just doesn't have the, the strength to hold it down. I have found. And I made a complete mess of that. Okay. And gluing on my table as usual. So now that I've got that in there and some fabric stuck in there, I'm gonna trim off the excess here. I will have to repunch this, but I'm not gonna do that until I figure out what I'm gonna do on the back because I might end up covering up more of these holes. Okay, so I think now what I'm gonna do is put my reading in here and let it cover up the other parts that I don't want. I covered up that, I didn't mean to. Um, I'm gonna go down here, cause then I can cover up a lot more of that. And you see, we're still getting that movement, that flow, which I do really like. And I didn't mean to cover up quite so much of that word, but sometimes it happens. Okay. So you can see there like that, just, just that alone beautiful, quick and easy journal page. I wouldn't even have to do anything else to it. I mean, of course, I'd probably want to put my reflections in here. Um, but at this point, you know, I can just write them on the back and that works just as well too. But I think I do want to include a little um, space that says a little uh, bit here that says like weekly reading or something like that. So I'm going to go, I'm basically mimicking the back and forth of the mountains and I'm going to put that up there. And that's not really a straight line. So I'm going to 
scoot it up a little bit and then I will chop off the excess. really need to clean my glue. Okay. So I'm going to take that off here. Ground things around. So now I have a little place to write um, my weekly reading. And then I'm going to add the date, which today is the 7th. 2020. So just add that down there. Okay, so now that I have this front page done, now I can kind of turn it over and do my reflections on the back. And really, I'm not going to do anything fancy. I just grabbed some snippets out of the book to start with because I kind of want to dive deeper into this deck um, later on. So I just wanted to kind of pull my three cards so I could read the book, kind of get an idea, and then I can go back and explore them in a little bit more depth and add my own layer to it um, later on. And I can always use additional pages for that. And that's one of the reasons why I'm liking the disbound is I can add more to it later on. So even if say two days from now, I come back to this reading and I have some more insights to add, I can just tuck another piece of paper in there. And um, that takes care of, you know, adding in those, those areas that I want. So I think what we'll do is just do a couple of um, these little, um, maybe we'll use some different things here. I have like all kinds of scrappy things. So the text is upside down, but um, I think that, you know, sometimes just using your scraps is good. I like that color too. So I have three cards, so I think I'm gonna to wanna to do three spaces. Maybe. This might be better in theory than in practice. Start with this. Okay, so now that I have finished um, creating the page, let's take a look at what we've got. So I used a book page as my base. So I let the book page, the design of the page, the text on the page actually serve as the background or the basis for my spread that I'm creating on my journal page. So I kept in the bits of writing, the in this case, poetry that I liked. Um, cut off the pieces that didn't really relate. It's not that I didn't like it. I was just specifically looking for um, phrases and, and words that fit the scope of my reading or the um, energy or the theme of my reading. And that's one of the great things about using book pages that do have some writing on them because you can incorporate that writing in there. And in those cases where the writing doesn't um, relate at all, you can also just completely cover it up and let the rest of the page design um, provide that those background elements. So I covered up the bits that I didn't need, left another little bit here, added my reading, um, made a note of which reading it was and added my date. And that's really all I did to the main 
page because I wanted the design of the book page itself to really shine through. And then on the back, I just included my basic reading. I did some collaging for the titles. I could have just as easily written those on. I left this little phrase that was on the back of the page anyway. And I think overall it makes for a beautiful spread. Of course, this is really my main focus, right? Is my actual spread. This is kind of like the main, um, the main message, the main thing that I want to focus on. And then on the back, I just have um, what was in the guidebook. Now my intention is to go back and actually expand um, on this reading some more and to put my own interpretations. And so I have just a blank piece of dot grid paper that I've um, cut to size that I can do that with. But for today, I just wanted to show you how you can use a book page to create a basis for your reading like I have done here. And then we can see another one um, here. This is actually the back of the page that I left as it is. And then here is the front that I actually did my collaging over the top of. And here's another one where I created the um, reading around the design of the page again. And I believe on this one, yes, it left the front as well because sometimes I like them just as they are. And when you use just one side or the other, it allows you to kind of retain a little bit of the energy of the book itself and to incorporate that into your journal, which is a lot of, um, which is a lot of fun and can be, can add a, a whole nother layer to your tarot journal because I'm incorporating some additional artwork and poetry and things of that nature as well as my own reflections and my cards and, and that sort of thing. So that is a look at how I use book pages in my tarot journal. Thank you for joining me for this tarot journal with me. You will find links for most of the products that I've used in this video in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed this process and will join me again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.